Welcome to the vocabulary lesson for long time affair. Let's get started right away. Okay, the letter begins with the uh, headline. Long time affair appears set to last for long time to come. All right, an affair means... It has a couple meanings. In this case, affair means a relationship outside of marriage. It means sex outside of marriage. So it means you are married, but you have sex with another person. Or it, it sometimes can mean even if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and then you have sex with another person. We call that an affair. It's a noun, an affair. So this letter is from a woman, and she's having an affair. She's having sex with another guy, not her husband. Okay, and it's been, it's, and it says set to last. Set means uh, prepared or ready, ready to last, for a long time. It means it's going to continue for a long time. To last, to last, using a to last as a verb. Now, you know the word last, you know, first, second, third, and then last. But here we're using it as a verb, to last. And to last means to continue. And it gives the idea of how much time does something continue. If you say, the movie lasted, past tense, the movie lasted two hours. It means the movie was two hours long. The movie continued for two hours. It lasted. So to last, to last as a verb means uh, time period, how long something continues, to continue for some time, to last. Okay, and then she says, I'm married. He's married. We're in love and have been for eight years. We've tried breaking it off several times. To break something off means to stop doing it. Or it means to get away from something, to escape from something. So if you have an affair, it means you're, you're having sex with another person. And if you try to break off the affair, break it off means to finish it, stop doing it, uh, escape from it, get away from it. Right. So to break it off, to break something off. Of course, there's a direct meaning. It can mean you really do break something. But in this case... B to break off means to stop doing something, to not continue doing it. And it can also mean to escape from, get away from. Okay, so break off, to break off something, to break it off. Okay, she says, but a force bigger than both of us keeps bringing us back together. A force means some power, a power. Maybe, I don't know what she's talking about, but some kind of natural feeling, some strong power inside them, or maybe outside them, maybe God or something, but whatever. Some big power keeps bringing them together again. They try to stop, but then they get back together again and again. Okay, she says, before this, she never believed in soulmates or true love. A soulmate, it's a noun, a soulmate is your perfect partner. It's the perfect match for you in the world, in the universe, right? So if you say, she is my soulmate, it means she is my perfect match. She's the perfect person for me. It's more than just love. It's more than just a girlfriend or boyfriend. It's more even more than just husband or wife. It's the idea that it's your life partner, someone with a very, very deep connection. So this man is her soulmate. Okay. She said, our love is deep and unconditional. Unconditional, unconditional. Unconditional means without conditions. Without conditions. A condition is a rule or a circumstance or a situation. Okay, that's a condition. So, without conditions means without rules. So, what does that mean? Unconditional love. We use this phrase a lot. Unconditional love. Unconditional love means love without rules. It means you love somebody in any situation. It doesn't matter what happens. You will always love them. Nothing can change it. Unconditional love. If they kill your brother, you will still love them. If they steal your money, you will still love them. If they hit you in the face and kick you in the stomach, you will still love them. That is unconditional love. It means in any condition, in any situation, 
anything happens, it doesn't matter, you will still love them. That is unconditional love, unconditional love. So she's saying with this man, she has unconditional love. Nothing can change it. Even something bad happens. Even though they have some problems, they still love each other the same. She says our roots are intertwined. First the word intertwined, intertwined. Inter means between, okay? So, and twined means tied together. So tied together in between. It means wrapped around each other. So you can imagine if, you, if I take some string and then I take another piece of string and I, I wrap them together, I tie them together many, many, many times. We say that is intertwined. The two strings are intertwined. They're wrapped together many times. Roots, you can imagine roots, the roots of a plant, the roots of a tree. The roots grow down, and then they another tree is next to it, and those roots also grow down. And then they mix together, right? The roots of each tree mix together, and they go around each other, and then they become connected. We say those roots are intertwined. They're wrapped around each other. They go around each other, and they're connected very strongly. So what does she mean? Our roots are intertwined. Well, I don't know exactly, but I think she means roots. She means their deep, deep emotions, their deep thoughts, their deep feelings are connected very strongly. They're, they're around each other. They're connected. They're intertwined. So their roots are intertwined. Their deep feelings are intertwined. She says, it's a shame that it happened late in life. It's a shame means it's too bad. It's a shame means it's a bad situation or it's unfortunate. That's really the best, probably the best meaning. It's unfortunate. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. Some people say it's a pity. It's a pity. I hear a lot of students say it's a pity. But in fact, it's a pity is not so common in normal speech. In fact, Tomoe says it's a pity all the time. It's kind of cute. Uh, but what we really say is it's a shame. It's a more common phrase. It's a shame. So it's too bad. It's unfortunate. It's a shame it happened late in life. So she's saying, oh, I wish I met him when I was younger. It's a shame that we met later in life. But it's okay. She says, he always treats me like a queen. Treats me. Treats me. He always treats me like a queen. Treats me means, or treat someone. To treat someone means that's how you behave. It's how you act towards them. So if, I, if you say, he treats me like a queen, it means he's very, very nice to me, to her, right? He's very, very nice to her. He imagines, he pretends that she is this great queen, this wonderful person. He serves her. He's always so kind to her. He treats her like a queen. Now, we have another phrase in English which is, he treats me like a dog. He treats me like a dog. Well, that's the opposite meaning. It means he is very cruel, very mean, very bad, not respectful, not kind. He treats me like a dog. It means he yells at you and gives you bad food and is very unkind, not kind. All right, so treats me, treats me. It's how you act, how you behave towards another person, with another person. All right, and then she says, neither of us is leaving our spouses or family. They're not going to leave their spouses. A spouse is a husband or a wife. So husband is a man, wife is a woman, but a spouse is a man or a woman. doesn't matter. It means husband or wife. So they're not going to leave their husbands or wives. They're not going to leave them. But she says, but she's going to continue seeing this man, just continue with the affair because it's magical. They love each other unconditionally. And finally, in the last paragraph, she asks Abby, is it wrong? Do we go on until something changes? To go on means to continue, to keep doing what you're doing. Should they go on with the affair? Should they continue the affair? Should they keep doing it? So to go on, to go on. To go on means to continue. To go on means keep going, keep, keep doing it. Go on. She says, or should we try again to break away? Here we have break away again, S uh, similar to break it off. Break away means escape. It definitely it means get away, to escape, to leave, 
some situation, to break away from a situation. So to break away is to leave a situation, to get away from a situation. Okay, and finally she says, an affair, no matter how you slice it, will never be accepted. No matter how you slice it, this is a slang phrase in American English. No matter how you slice it means in any situation. It means however you look at the situation. Even if you're, if you're a man or a woman, if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Everybody will agree with the same opinion. So no matter how you slice it, it means no matter how you look at it, no matter who you are, it doesn't matter. Everybody agrees an affair is not acceptable. So no matter how you slice it, no matter how you slice it, the affair will never be accepted. So she says, an affair, no matter how you slice it, means any opinion, doesn't matter, everybody agrees. An affair, no matter how you slice it, will never be accepted in the eyes of traditional society. Ah, so now she's saying who, who can't accept it? In the eyes of means in the opinion of. In the opinion of. So in the eyes of traditional society. So traditional society cannot accept it. In the eyes of, in their opinion, traditional society cannot accept it. So maybe in the eyes of other people, someone else, maybe it's okay. Right? In their eyes, in the eyes of this woman, the affair is okay. But in the eyes of traditional society, old society, the affair is not okay. So in the eyes of means in the opinion of. Whose opinion? She says, finally, it will be perceived as unacceptable. Perceived, to perceive, means to see something. But it really has a deeper meaning than just seeing. It, what it really means is how you judge what you see. So for example, I'll give you an example. A man runs out of a building. He runs out of the building and he's screaming, Ah! Okay, everybody sees the man. Everybody hears the man screaming. But everyone will have a different opinion about what is happening. Right? One person says, oh, he's angry. This man is very, very angry. But you ask another person, they say, oh, no, he's not angry. He's afraid. This man is very afraid. You ask a third person, and the third person says, oh, no, 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 he's hurt. This man is hurt. He feels pain. Something's wrong. Right? It's the same situation. Everybody sees the same thing, and they hear the same thing, but they perceive something different. So perceive is really what you see plus what you think. That's what perceive means. What you see or hear or feel plus what you think. Those two together, is that means perceive. To perceive is a verb. So she's saying people will perceive the affair as unacceptable. They will see it and they will think, they will decide it's not good. It doesn't, now, is it really unacceptable? Is it really bad? Well, I don't know. We don't know, right? Then we would use the verb is. We say the affair is unacceptable means it's, it's a totally correct. Everybody agrees it's unacceptable. But if we use the verb perceive, it means that's what people think. That's their opinion, but it might be wrong. So perceive. Perceive has the idea of opinion. It's what you see and hear plus your opinion. All right, and finally, she signs it, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered in New York. Bewitched is like uh, magic, right? You see the word witch in that word. It means a, a, a witch has put a spell on you. It means you're under the effect of magic. So she, she's saying that she feels some kind of magical feeling. She's bewitched because of this great man. Bothered. Bothered means upset. We've had bothered before. Bothered means uh, upset or annoyed. Upset or annoyed, bothered. So she also feels a little bit annoyed and bothered because it's a difficult situation. And finally, bewildered. Bewildered means confused. Confused. So this woman feels bothered. She's a little uh, annoyed and upset. But she's also bewildered. She's confused. She doesn't know what should she do. Bewildered. Bewildered. 
All right, that is the end of this lesson, the vocabulary lesson. Listen to it a few times and then move on to the mini story. Bye-bye.